Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Aaron Howell. Um, I'm the uh, chair of the CAR Professional Development uh, Master Group, and I'm welcoming, welcoming you to the January Latte and Learn. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about septic, um, a subject that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we're very fortunate this morning to have Deborah Rudder uh, from Nest Realty Group, um, expert on our subject matter. Deborah's going to cover uh, what a septic system is, uh, the kinds of systems we have here in the area, and what the Virginia contract says uh, about an inspection and much more. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, I'm going to introduce you to our presenting sponsor, uh, Fulton Mortgage Company. Uh, for, they're going to be sponsoring this informative session at this time. I would like to introduce you to Julia Roberts. Uh, she's going to share a few words with us. Good morning, everyone. And again, <clears throat> welcome to uh, the first session. Uh, happy 2022. And uh, we were talking before everyone got on and, you know, uh, Carl had mentioned he wanted the, your worst septic stories. And, um, you know, I, I think we sponsor these meetings because we think education is the key here and we don't want those <clears throat> nightmare septic stories or any other stories. Um, you know, a lot of times you have to learn things the hard way in life. I know I have, and I'm sure you have, but um, hopefully with a, a session like this, we can learn a lot and avoid having to learn the hard way and uh, maybe a pitfall that could delay a closing. So again, we're happy to sponsor here at Fulton Mortgage Company. And um, please reach out ever to any of us with any questions or, um, or any needs. All right, great. Thank you, Julia. Um, Deborah, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Um, everyone, we're going to have a Q&A session after Deborah is done. Um, so if you have any questions, please hold them until then. You know, write them down, remember them, whatever. But uh, Deborah, it's all yours. Great. Happy 2022, everybody. I know we're just getting started in the spring season, but uh, maybe a few of you have already had septic inspections um, already this year. Uh, my goal is to give everybody a little something, right? So if you've never done one, um, you've got something to walk away with. If you've done a few, maybe you've got some uh, new pointers or new things to think about. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, so this is, this is me. I uh, have done septic inspections for uh, quite some time. I used to be a broker up in Maine and up there, uh, septic inspections were sort of assumed. They were very routine. You got a home inspection and you got a septic inspection at the same time. So they weren't unique. Um, they weren't special, they weren't separate. So uh, when I came down to Nest in 2009, um, you know, I just sort of brought that, uh, brought that approach with me. Um, I am a Virginia Master Well Owner Network volunteer. So I do um, uh, well education for private, private uh, well owners as well. And I live in Southern Albemarle, so I am also on a well and septic. So this is not just uh, you know theoretical for my buyers and sellers, but uh, I've got a, a septic system as well. So a few disclaimers. So this is just about what I've seen, heard, learned, been taught over the years. Um, this is not sort of you know there's no certificate or at least none that I know of to get in this. So this is very much um, me based. Um, we're not going to talk about which systems are better or worse because that depends on a variety of factors. And we're not really going to, we're going to use a conventional system as a way to anchor all of our discussion points. So while there's lots of different kinds of systems out there in general, and lots that the surrounding counties um, allow, we're just going to talk about a conventional system to use that as an anchor for um, our discussion here. We're also not going to specifically talk about what to do when problems are found, since there's so many problems. Um, we can talk about how to approach those at the end. Um, and of course, realizing that, you know, this is for some people a sensitive subject, um, we'll try to uh, keep the, the toilet humor to a minimum. So uh, when we think about septic inspections, we should think about them like a home inspection, right? We shouldn't think about them any differently than we would think about having the electrical system looked at, having a roof looked at, um, making sure that the plumbing is okay, making sure the foundation is okay. The biggest system in a house with a septic system is a septic system, right? It's, it's large, it takes up a lot of space, it's expensive to fix, it's usually expensive to repair. So we should be thinking about 
um, in terms of representing our buyers and sellers that these two things would naturally sort of go together. So here's just some statements that I, you know, that I've put up here that probably most of us would not be saying, right? The house is only five years old. You don't need an inspection or the house seems to be really clean. I'm sure that in the home inspection won't reveal anything, right? Any place that these statements say house, if you just substitute septic inspection, you would be thinking that, huh, okay, these two things do sort of go together. So I think that's one of the things to impress upon is that this is not an addition or something special or an add-on or an afterthought. This should really be thought of as something that you're doing at the same time that you're um, putting together your, your actual home inspection. So I went back um, all the way to 2012, so about 10 years, just to see what the, uh, the home inspection addendum said. And from 2012, the home inspection addendum was talking about septic systems. So this isn't new. This isn't something that we're talking about because it's um, you know new to the VAR 600. It's new to the home inspection addendum. Um, it's new to our area. This has been around and allowed and something that um, the contract has you know mentioned and talked about for at least the last 10 years. So this is certainly you know nothing new. And you'll note that this is, um, you know, even from 2012, this was buried in the home inspection addendum. So even back then, you didn't need special permission. You didn't need um, an addendum beyond this to ask for a septic inspection. It was, it was even back then just considered part of an overall approach to, um, you know, looking out for your buyers. So a conventional system um, is really very simple. It's amazingly simple. Um, they typically have no moving parts. There's no motors. Um, they don't require a lot of maintenance. Um, it's really kind of an engineering marvel. And this is what is what we have in the majority of homes in central Virginia. You've got a line running from the house to a big septic tank that holds the liquids and solids that come from the house. Then it goes out to a distribution box with lines from that box. And that spreads that water out over a large, uh, large field, the large geographical area that uh, gray water sinks down, it's um, purified by the soil underneath. And then, um, yeah, that process just keeps going. So it's a very simple process. If it's well installed and well maintained, it should last, you know, 30 to 50 years easily, um, depending on the soil and so forth. So you'll notice in this um, picture that we've got a, you know, groundwater underneath, right? So groundwater is one of the things that we're trying to protect and making sure that we've got good functional septic systems. And this shows it a little bit better. So we can see that you've got the wastewater here and then the groundwater. And you, if you've got, you know, if you're pulling your water from a well, you're really pulling your water from just underneath where the waste is treated on site. So it's really important for your buyers to make sure they've got a system as they're going into this purchase that really, you know, that really works um, not only today, but you know, it's gonna work um, in the future as well. Um, what you'll see over here are some uh, different hybrid things that you might've seen, things with uh, multiple, multiple uh, boxes. Sometimes we've got alarm systems, sometimes we've got grinders and pumps to pump waste uphill. So in our area, there's certainly a good variety of kinds of septic systems. Um, most of those are really um, focused on uh, the terrain itself, right? If you don't have enough land, um, if the best place for the field happens to be uphill versus downhill, there are certainly um, different versions of conventional system that we see around here. But in general, this picture on the left here is a great descriptor about um, how a system is, is typically laid out in our area. So the box itself, right? When you flush the toilet, take a shower, do the dishes, run the laundry, you've got gray water and or black water that comes from the house into a tank. Um, tanks can be you know, anywhere from 500 to about 1500 gallons. So the solids settle to the bottom, the gray water rises to the top and when it gets to a certain level, it spills over into the outlet pipe, goes to the distribution box and then goes out to the leach field. So it's a very simple, um, elegant sort of system. Um, one of the things you might encounter when you uh, go on a system is you'll see in this middle picture here, uh, green risers, sometimes the, the outlet, uh, the manhole access covers are so deep, it makes sense to put a, a riser on top so that you don't need an excavator to dig down to be able to open up these, open up these holes. So sometimes that can be helpful as well. 
Um, the distribution box itself is probably the biggest failure point. Um, the boxes are usually, but not a um, precast con. In the old days, they used to, you know, build them on site, but now they're precast, so they tend to last a little bit, um, not quite as long. But these boxes are set in the ground, and um, the the overflow water from the tank goes into this box, and this box then distributes all of that water um, to each of the individual septic lines. So this is really um, where we typically see uh, evidence of failure of the actual leach field. If one of the tubes is backed up and is not um, taking water at all, we know that there's a problem with that line down there. If we see roots and trees um, in this box, which is very common, um, that's obviously not a good sign either. Sometimes we open up these boxes and the lid is completely missing and the box is full of dirt. Um, so opening up this box is really key to, uh, key to the inspection process. And it'll also you know, identify obviously where this is on the land so that somebody doesn't plant something over it or accidentally drive over to dig it up. And it also let you know how big your leach field is. So it really serves multiple purposes to be able to have this, um, to be able to have this open like that. So the leach field itself, uh, these are just a variety, um, you know, sort of looks like this. Again, it's a very simple process. It's um, PVC or some other kind of pipe, depending on what the county requires. Um, they're typically downhill from a house. Um, they're typically put on or buried on contour lines. So a lot of times, um, you know, you might be surprised how quickly your septic inspector can actually find the leach field. And it's because they're looking for some obvious signs. Um, and some of them are sort of the way the land lays the terrain, um, how the land falls away from the house where the pipe exits. So um, it shouldn't be too much of a mystery about where the, where the leach field is. But these are some good examples of uh, some fields in our, in our area. So uh, septic systems are really a public health issue, right? Um, you know, a million and a half Virginians get their drinking water from private wells. And most of those private wells are on private property. So when we have a leach field and a well on the same property, we don't want those two things to mix. We wanna make sure those things are separate. So one of the things that is required when installing or you know, fixing a lot of components of a septic system is actually getting a permit. Um, the health department is the one that issues these permits. And um, this uh, slideshow is gonna be available afterwards. So if you need to um, refer back to this to write down the um, contact information for, for the office where you are, then feel free to do that. Um, so the Virginia Department of Health um, in our area, specifically in Albemarle County, um, the Thomas Jefferson Health District is the one that keeps and holds and records all of the um, septic permits. So a permit is issued by the number of bedrooms for the house. Um, it's not by square footage. It's really um, a bedroom count and the bedroom counts assume two people per bedroom. Um, the makeup of the soil, the contours of the land, um, you know, the elevation and what the county has already prescribed as um, systems that are allowed in that area are how the permits are actually issued. So most of the um, most of the permits for our area are on file at the local office down off of uh, Rose Hill. So um, you know, pre-COVID, you could go in the back and get one. Um, sometimes on the spot, waiting for ten or fifteen minutes. Um, now they're asking for those requests to come in via email. So they're not very hard to get. Um, you ask for the form by email, fill it out, send it back, and usually within a few days, you get back um, whatever is actually available. So to request a permit, because um, really this is sort of where it starts, is you know start with the seller. They may have one at the ready, and there's no reason to go do a bunch of extra work if the, the seller or the listing agent already has one because um, the seller's provided it. Um, if they don't have one, get in touch with the health department if you think your deal is going to go through. Um, some of these requests, um, you know, take five, seven days, you know, if people can't get into the office or if the office is short staffed, it might take a little bit of extra time. So give yourself time to actually get that, uh, get that uh, FOIA request, FOIA for those of you who know, it's Freedom of Information Act. So in Elmerle County, it's a simple one page form. Um, you fill out the form and what you get back is whatever's on file. So um, typically um, at the health department, the septic system and the, uh, the well permit, both of those permits typically come back to you at the same time. Um, 
You'll also typically see a schematic. Um, oftentimes that schematic is what was planned as part of the original permit, but maybe isn't necessarily what was actually built. So do keep that in mind. If you um, get a copy of that schematic and you hand it to the pump operator and he's digging around in a specific place according to that plan, it's possible that you know maybe there was a big rock in the way, there was a tree in the way, um, something didn't allow it to be where it was originally planned. So it might be in a slightly different spot. Um, what I've also noticed over time um, with the health department is that I'll get a copy with um, something on it and then a blank piece of paper and then something on it and a blank piece of paper. And what they're doing is um, copying both sides of the paper and sending everything because sometimes the, um, the folks out in the field will write notes on the back of pages. So they want to be sure those are sent too. So um, it's it's not a it's not a long process. Once you get the um, request from the health department, it takes maybe 15 minutes to fill out. Um, again, it can all be done by email now. Um, my guess is that at some point in time, the uh, the local office for the health department will open back up and allow people to do walk-ins. But in general, it's not uh, it's not it's not a really burdensome uh, really burdensome process. So the reason that you want to get the permit is to really uh, lessen hassles for the sellers, right? Reduce the amount of time that somebody is on site and to minimize the number of holes. That's really why we ultimately want the, the septic system. It serves a lot of, or excuse me, the permit. It serves a lot of other purposes too, but the permit really gives us the location about where everything is. And that can be really helpful for a new buyer if they're thinking about putting in a pool, if they're thinking about expanding the house, if they're thinking about adding a garage, right? This will tell them where they can't do that um, rather than finding out sort of on the back end that, you know, the, the perfect pool they had in mind in the perfect spot is now a place where they can't build it. That would be something that you would want your buyer to know um, prior to them finding out on their own. So the permit really um, serves multiple purposes um, other than just simply you know, showing you where to dig. It gives a good idea about uh, for the new buyer where, where everything is so that they can be good stewards of their, of their system. If nothing is available, and sometimes that's the case, right? The house is really old, um, something was lost, um, you know, the, the, what they, what's on file is really hard to read. Um, going into the basement or crawl space is something that a pump operator will sometimes do just to get an idea about where to start in terms of which side, which side of the house. So that can be helpful as well. So if there are no permits at all, right? And sometimes that's the case, right? There's just no permits. The house is too old. Somebody misfiled something under the wrong address. Um, we'll start with a few assumptions. Um, first, assume that it's downhill, right? Um, these systems work on gravity. Um, while, and while there are systems that work with a pump to pump waste uphill, uh, most of them will try to be sited so that all of the waste flows downhill. So start with that assumption. Um, again, figure out where the exit pipe is of the house. This is not something that you need to do. This is something that the septic um, inspector can do themselves. But keep in mind that um, lots of components of this system are could be under trees, um, bushes, porches, decks, sheds, um, concrete patios, house additions. I've seen them in all sorts of crazy places where they shouldn't be. Um, I've seen them have wires running over them, wires running around them, um, tree roots exactly on top. So um, again, if there are no permits, um, these are some things to keep in mind as you're um, sort of out exploring, trying to figure out where the, where the system might be. So a few uh, tips for listing agents. So, you know, take the extra step and get the, uh, get the permit for your seller in advance. It doesn't take very long. Um, and it's really going to help, um, especially if your seller has a really nice yard and it's the middle of summer and they're not going to be very happy about having um, some holes in their backyard. It'll go much more smoothly if you get that permit in advance, figure out where that stuff is and be able to exactly identify where the, um, where the septic inspector should actually be digging rather than just um, you know, probing and trying to assume that where they are is pretty close and then having to make two or three holes. Um, the other thing you can do is ask who and when did the last um, pumping, right? Most uh, folks who are on septic systems know that they've got to get their septic system pumped every three to five years. So um, on the chance that your seller has done that, they should roughly remember when that was done and probably who did it. Um, and then probe a little bit further if that's the case and ask if it included, you know, actually opening the tank lid um, if the box, the distribution box was actually opened up, um, they've got a big one. Sometimes that can be that can be helpful to show that that was actually done. 
So a little bit of left front and certainly be helpful. For my sellers, that if possible, that's good habit, right? Um, it's in the track, it's something a buyer's allowed to do. Um, and having a seller find out, you know, 20 minutes before um, that happens is probably not uh, probably not ideal. So let them know in advance that, that might be the case. They know where all their systems are, terrific. Have them mark those with um, paint, a flag, something like that, just to make sure that it's nice and nice and obvious where that stuff is. And then keep in mind that, you know, a snowy driveway that's not cleared can, you know, delay a pump operator. Um, having good access, soaking frozen ground, um, you know, too much rain. So keep in mind that sometimes extensions, especially this time of year, are uh, sort of part and parcel to the to the inspection process for septic systems. So on the buyer side, right, um, you need to really keep in mind the contract dates, right? If you've got a 10 or 15 or 16 day inspection window, don't start looking for a septic system inspection on day 10, right? The minute you're getting together your home inspection, you could also be making calls for the steps and inspect at the same time. You want those things to, to be early in the process if you can. Um, you don't want to have to ask for an extension just because you waited too long and septic, um, you know, septic inspections are like home inspections, right? There's a few people who are um, sort of accredited by the state who can do them. Um, they're in demand when it's busy. You want to make sure that you get, uh, you get your slot early on. Um, the other thing you can do as a buyer agent is, you know, document the process, right? Where that truck parked when it was there, um, the digging up process, uh, where those things were, especially if your buyer isn't there so that they can get an idea about where those things are in three years when they've got to figure out for themselves where that distribution box is and get ready for their own inspections. So documenting can be simply helpful as well. Um, in general, you know, inspections, everything goes really well. Two hours max. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't take too long. If um, all of the components are really readily identifiable in terms of their location, um, the pumping of the holding tank itself may take twenty minutes. So that's probably the the, the least amount of time in this process that um, the inspection takes. Mostly, it's just um, digging because a lot of this digging is actually um, done by hand. Um, I know for myself, I like to. The home inspection and the septic inspection on the same day doesn't always work out. It's um, you know, obviously less of a hassle for the sellers, and you know we want to keep sellers. Buyer is going to attend. You know this is an outside event, right? It's not inside, so if they really do want to attend, um, do encourage that, but just um, you know remind them um, it can be cold outside, it can be hot. Um, there's a lot of dirt that's thrown around as the holes are being dug. So be sure to uh, you know dress appropriately for that as well. Hey, Deborah. So like, you know, the home inspection, Deborah? like so many, yeah. Um, you're glitching your sound out pretty bad. I don't know if, yeah. Okay, I just want to let you know. Uh, okay. I'm uh, not sure what I can do for that, but um, let's see if that, See if that, this works it better. Um, so this process, like other processes um, in this, is really about preparation, right? So being sure that buyers and sellers, the listing agent, uh, everybody in this process really understands um, who's going to be doing what and when, um, and making sure that uh, the inspection day itself is really um, set up to be, to be smooth um, relative to pain and great for everybody. So uh, there's a few steps to this process. So the first one is, um, you know, once the pump operator arrives at the house, um, be sure that nobody's parked in the driveway, right? They usually back down a driveway, so make sure that that's open. Um, you can certainly be helpful in that process to make sure they don't run over mailboxes or a tree or anything like that. Um, most trucks usually come with a 100 feet of pumping pipe. So that 100 feet will go to most tanks. Um, sometimes they need to um, come back with extra hoses if they don't have them with them. But in general, um, for most of the tanks that are in Central Virginia, 100 feet is about, is about, enough, about enough length. Um, sometimes if the property that's being inspected has really nice grass and it's the middle of summer, I'll 
take the extra step and bring a tarp so that the dirt that is um, hollowed out of the hole goes onto the tarp and doesn't you know mess up the mess up the nice green grass too badly. So the the tanks that are in my area will hold about two tanks worth of pots in general. So those two tanks, um, you know, the operator will do two tanks and then have to drive um, away somewhere and then actually dump tank and then and come back. So if you can get an early get an early AM appointment to get to be the first of one of those two tanks, that's really that's really kind of ideal. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but if you can get an early AM appointment, that's um, that's certainly preferable. So the next step is actually um, locate the tank itself. Um, most operators will uh, look at the outgoing lid side and open that up. Um, a lot of times they can just simply hand dig um, down and pop that lid open. Um, if it's really deep and I've seen uh, tanks that are you know, 15 feet deep, they may have to actually bring an excavator um, back if they have brought one with them. And again, that can be another good reason to actually have permit on file because you'll be able to see how deep the tank is. Um, so once that is opened up, um, the septic inspector is really looking at water levels, um, debris, um, what's floating on the top. I mean, ideally it really shouldn't be much of anything, but those are one of the reasons that we like to have the, the lid actually, actually looks like versus using the four inch white PVC, which really doesn't give you much hey, of a view of a view of anything. Hey, Deborah. Uh -huh. um, it, it looks to me like your camera might yes. be frozen. And so you might try just turning your camera off, which might help your audio to stream better. All right, let's try that. All right. So once the Hopefully that'll work a little bit better, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, once the tank has been located, the next thing to do is to go from the tank to the actual uh, distribution box itself. So the distribution box itself uh, can be as close as 10 feet from the, the holding tank, or it might be 500 feet from the holding tank. Um, a lot of uh, folks who do septic inspections in our area will actually have a, a line locating uh, tool or they'll have a camera that um, can actually pinpoint where that distribution box is. But the other thing about this process that can be really helpful is sometimes these, pro these components are actually not on the property of the person who's buying the property, right? Sometimes the distribution box be on a neighbor's property. Um, sometimes leach field is on a neighbor's property. So again, pulling that permit and sometimes um, bring it to your attention so that you need to get permission from an adjacent neighbor that you've got the ability to actually, you've got the ability to actually do that up front rather than finding that out um, on the day of the actual inspection. So the next step is the actual distribution box. Again, um, this is something that's typically um, hand dug. They're in general sort of three to four feet by four to six feet. Um, they're not really that big. They've got a, a pipe coming in from the distribution tank and then lots of um, pipes going out to the leach field. So one of the things that you're looking at in this process is, you know, is the lid intact? Um, was it on straight? Um, are there roots and trees growing, you know, inside the actual box itself as it's been sitting for a while? Um, is there debris in the distribution box? There should only be clean water in that box, or I should say um, gray water in that box. There shouldn't be any debris, leaves, dirt, twigs, sticks. Um, there shouldn't be anything in that box except for clear water. So if you pop this open and you notice that there's anything about that, that's certainly a sign of, a sign of an issue. Um, each of those um, holes has a line going out of it, and that should correspond with the permit that you've pulled. And all of those holes should be taking water at about the same speed and the same rate. So while the inspector is in the house going through his um, motions for the home inspection, 
and water's running through the house. This could be a great way to determine which of the lines, if any, might be a little bit slow or might be clogged as the water begins to back up um, back into the distribution box. And there's a few ways that um, getting that box, um, you know, getting the water into those lines um, more easily and more consistently can be done. And that's something the septic inspector can help you to maybe figure out. So the final, the final step of this is, uh, is the actual leach field itself. So the line, the number of lines out from the distribution box should be pretty consistent with what matches on the permit. Um, all of those lines should be taking water pretty evenly. And again, keep in mind that this entire system is completely hidden. All the stuff is underground. The lines are underground. The boxes are underground. Um, all of this is something that can't be uh, looked at with just simply walking around in the general area. Um, that's what we would uh, sort of call the stop and sniff test, right? It's uh, you go to the place where you sort of think it is, and really you're looking for a catastrophic failure at that point that the leach field and everything else is just completely, completely failed. So you really want to, you know, pay a shovel, have all of this stuff on earth so you can really get an idea about what's, uh, about what's actually going on. So when the tank is pumped, um, it's, a, it's a pretty quick process. It might take uh, 20, 25 minutes. Um, there's a pipe put in the actual tank and all of the solids and all of the water is removed. And then um, typically it's backfed and another four to six inches are actually put back in the tank so that there's bacteria in there. Um, so that as the tank starts getting used again, the bacteria is already activated and is, is um, you know, taking care of the new waste that comes in. Um, it's possible that given your inspection, the distribution box that might need to be pumped out as well. Um, if it's dirty, um, if you know, stuff has overflowed into that, um, but in general, it's just typically the actual, actual tank itself. So the last step is really the cleanup, right? Making sure that we've got a, a happy seller. Um, you know, if you're there and you're observing this process, you know, making sure the lids, lids are back on straight, um, making sure that you know all the dirt is back in the holes, that it's you know it's raked nicely, the grass is cleaned up as much as possible, um, the pipes are loaded back up into the truck, and then anything that you might have moved so that the truck could back up is uh, put back in place. Um, I know one of the things that I really like to do is take pictures of the entire process. One, if my buyer's not there, um, I'd like to have them know you know what happened and where everything is located. But it also makes sense for uh, the listing agent. If things came up, you've got um, you know something very specific that you can show the listing agent to help troubleshoot. Um, if there is a problem found, it really makes sense to leave all of this stuff uncovered. Um, but of course, you know, dogs, kids, um, you know, other critters could certainly fall into these holes. So not every company will leave open holes. So if an open hole is left, just make sure that it's uh, obviously clearly identified for everybody. So, you know, when you're working with the sellers, some sellers have no idea they're on a septic system, right? They just have assumed that based on their location, um, that they're on public sewer, even though they have never paid a sewer, you know, they've never paid a sewer bill. They figure they're close enough to town that they're surely on, on the municipal system. So if they had no idea or they've got no records um, and the agent that you're working with isn't familiar with septic systems, the whole process can be a little bit more, a little bit more tricky. Um, in the inspection process, the distribution box by far is the most common thing that fails um, over time. These boxes last maybe, uh, you know, seven to 10 years, whereas the leach field might, uh, you know, last 25 to 30 years pretty easily. So the distribution box is typically the, the most common failure point. Um, if the system has failed itself or there's several components that are really in need of attention, you know, uh, you're obviously going to have to work with uh, the seller side in terms of, you know, the time and the timing of the year, um, what the current land allows um, in terms of putting a new system in. Um, new permits for the county, I believe, are a two acre minimum now, just to be able to have enough land for a, a replacement uh, leach field if one is needed. So if you're selling a house on a half acre and a new system is needed, it's possible that, you know, a hybrid, more expensive system um, is going to be called for by the by the county. So um, you know if you encounter problems, there are workarounds 
but it's certainly something that you want to make sure that uh, you're you're addressing early in the process. So obviously, if a seller doesn't know they have a system, um, if they can't produce a permit, uh, they have no idea where any component is in their yard. And you know, if during the home inspection or when you looked through the house, um, you saw stuff in the toilet that wasn't toilet paper, you see wipes all over the house. Um, you know, the the toilet paper itself is you know carpet thickness. Um, there's a garbage disposal. These can be signs that you know the septic system may not necessarily be as healthy as it could be otherwise. So these are just a few quick um, signs to look for as you're doing your walkthrough, um, either during the home inspection or even while you're just um, checking in the house up. These can be some some uh, some gentle warning signs. So you know, part of this is also being a good buyer advocate, right? Um, for a lot of our buyers, the first time they've ever lived in a place with a septic system is when they come to Central Virginia. Um, they need to be educated about what it means to live on a septic system, and they need to also be the educator for, um, you know, folks coming into their house, right? Folks who are house sitting, um, you know, neighbors, friends, family who are coming over when they have a party, right? A lot of folks don't realize that, you know, flushing a diaper down the toilet um, is probably the worst thing for a septic system but it's up to the buyer to you know, be a good educator for those, for those kinds of things. So, uh, so these are just a, a quick view of some of the really unbelievable things I've seen as, as, part, of the, uh, as part of inspections that I've done. Um, I've seen uh, tanks underneath concrete patios and that required, as you can imagine, um, a jackhammer um, and quite a bit of extra time to, uh, to actually get to that tank. Um, I've sold a house that uh, the owner's boys had dug the leach field for him. Um, you know, he thought it was about 50 years ago. And as you can imagine, it probably wasn't that deep. He thought it was maybe six inches. Um, I've seen debris on top that was about two feet thick and required a metal bar to actually break through because the baby wipes and the cleaning wipes had actually never broken down. So again, this is why we want to unearth, um, you know, pull up the lids of these tanks to be able to actually look inside because you wouldn't have been able to see this if you would have just used the, the cleanup pipe. Um, obviously, you know, candy wrappers, things floating in the tank, that's not great because those things would have been flushed on the toilet. Um, you know, dirt filled with a distribution box. I've seen, uh, you know, wires, all sorts of wires, TV cable wires, you know, running over and around distribution boxes. Um, and what all of these crazy findings have in common was they were discovered in the actual inspection process, right? None of these things would have been discovered if we didn't do an inspection or we just allowed the seller the way we used to, to do the inspection in which the, you know, the folks just sort of walked in the general area. So much like a home inspection, these uh, septic inspections are really, um, they're invasive, um, they're, uh, they're really specific, they're physical, and they really are part and partial to making sure that you're uh, showing, your, showing your, your buyer sort of what they're, what they're in for. So uh, that's really all, all I have. So I'm happy to um, you know, answer questions that that uh, that anybody has if anybody's got questions sorry about the the shaky internet okay so Ever? at this time we'll open up uh for questions anybody have any questions deborah yeah on page on your slide nine there was like a little round kind of end cap with a hole in it. I was curious what they, that was. There were like three of them. Slide nine. Ah, so those are called, um, those are called speed levelers. So sometimes, you know, a box, a distribution box should be um, set nice and level on the ground so that as water comes into that box, it feeds very evenly to each of the leach field pipes so that that soil isn't overtaxed in one area. But sometimes that's just not the case, right? Sometimes um, one, of the, one of the pipes fails. Um, sometimes the box um, you know, gets a little bit off kilter over time. So those speed levelers simply go into the end of the tube and then you can twist them a little bit 
and they regulate how much water each of those tubes can take. So sometimes if you know a specific tube is failing or isn't quite as, um, uh, you know, maybe has got some roots in it, but you can't quite get to um, cleaning that out, you might put a speed level in there and just let a little less water into that particular particular pipe. So they're really handy and most boxes um, are installed with those to begin with. Um, if you see that they're not, they're, they're inexpensive and they're easy to add and that's something that you can you know, certainly ask for as part of the, part of the home inspection. Thanks. Anyone else have a question? I just, I'm sorry, I was a little bit late, so I might have missed it, but did you talk about um, alternative systems or engineered systems at all at the beginning, Deborah? No, there, I would love to have done that, but there's not really enough time to sort of get into those. Um, there's certainly alternative systems in our area, um, you know, depending on the county and what they allow. Um, we certainly do see those as we tend to go a little bit further east. We see those a little bit more often just because there tends to be um, more rock in that area versus soil. So uh, no, you didn't miss anything in that. I used the well, conventional I gravity fed system. Uh, okay. Um, so my, my degree is in civil engineering and did a little bit of wastewater work during that degree, but, you know, um, happy to give a very brief overview of what that means, if it's helpful for people. Um, if anybody is interested, I mean, it, it basically is just that, you know, the conventional system, like what you showed works by percolation of the, like you said, you know, the wastewater through the soil, but if the soil doesn't perk, which everybody's heard of, right, during your perk test, then you don't have the right type of soil in order to filter um, the wastewater. And so you have to use some other type of filter, basically. And so the most common engineered system that I'm familiar with is what they call a peat moss system. Um, but there are other types, obviously. And you know, it's basically a tank in your yard or a, a filtration system that sits in the yard um, and handles it. And it needs a different type of maintenance and a different type of inspection. Um, so it's just something that's good for people to know. You may not have, if you don't have a conventional system, you know, there are other things to think about. Um, and then also with the, with the conventional systems, you briefly said something about the pumped versus gravity fed. And um, sometimes when the drain field is above the house or above the septic tank, you have to um, pump it, but you want that pump to be in the yard. And you mentioned that those have, um, you know, um, alarms on them, but there are times where sometimes there's a pump inside the house and that, that can be um, a little more risky, right? If it backs up versus yeah, if, that's that right. pump, if that pump for the septic is outside of the house in the yard next to yeah. the septic tank. Yeah, that's right. I've not seen any inside the house. I've seen the alarms inside the house. But uh, the, all the ones I've seen that have an alarm or have a pump, typically that's in a separate box, pretty close to the, to the tank itself. But yeah, I suppose you could put that pump in the house. I wouldn't want it in my house, but I suppose that's certainly possible. Question, <laughs> you put it in the chat, if you'd like to ask. Maria. Okay, um, in the chat it says, um, Maria is a real estate appraiser. For FHA or USDA loan, we need to know where the well and septic system is, which is the tank in the field. Please get ready for the appraiser. It's not the appraiser's job to find this information. It should be provided by the mortgage company to the appraiser. I often go around and ask the agents to, sit to save time. Yeah, again, a great reason to go and try to do some work up front to, to pull that permit. It just serves so many people uh, in so many different kinds of ways. Um, it speeds up the process. It um, creates less of a hassle for the sellers. It's really, it's, it's pretty simple to do. It's pretty quick to do. It's something you can do from a computer. So, you know, it's better to find out that there isn't one than not have one because you didn't find out. Right, and Virgil asks, any issues to look for in new construction? Yeah, that is a great question. So, you know, new, if, for those of us who do new construction that, you know, have um, pre-drywall and pre-closing uh, inspections, we know that, you know, 
these processes, these installations, these things are made and done and, you know, they're, they're done by humans, right? And humans make mistakes. So the newness of the system is interesting, but not necessarily relevant, right? The person doing the installation also may have had a bad day, right? May have used the wrong, uh, you know, may have thought they pulled the right, um, the right uh, uh, tank for the for the job and didn't pull the right tank for the job. Maybe they got, you know, they pulled something too small. Um, maybe they thought it was level, but it really just wasn't. So yeah, there's no age of a house for which I personally would say an inspection wouldn't be wouldn't be necessary. Um, including, you know, including new new construction. If it's really new construction and you can be on site for that installation, then that would certainly be one reason to not have one because you you watched it get installed. Any other? Um, yes, this is being recorded and we will have it on our YouTube YouTube channel. You should be able to get it. Um, We have so many questions. Sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand on the Zoom today for some reason. Can I ask <laughs> another question? Yeah, um, I, sure. Luckily, I haven't really had this happen, but the, I felt like the last time I did a septic inspection, when they opened it up, the concrete was getting pretty old and the lid started to feel like it was chipping and it ended up being fine, but it made me think like, what happens if like a lid cracks in an inspection? How have you dealt with that from a negotiating standpoint? Um, you mean in terms of uh, cracking because of the inspection? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it happens in the same way that, you know, a home inspection happens and, you know, there's a leak and water goes all over the floor, right? I mean, part right. of what an inspection is meant to do is uncover that kind of stuff. Um, the reason that those distribution boxes, they typically, the heavy gases typically tend to sit in those and that degrades mm -hmm. um, some of that cement. So yeah, you know, the person who's doing your system should be very careful, right? It's somebody else's house, but sometimes it, you know, it gets dropped too quickly, um, doesn't sit exactly the way it should be, and it cracks. And that's one of the, you know, reasons why if I'm on the listing side, I certainly want to see, uh, you know, I, I want to see that that lid was not cracked before and was, you know, certainly cracked after. Um, like any other negotiation inspection it's you know up to the buyers and sellers to figure out how to handle that but you know if in the course of normal you know opening and closing of that lid it cracks just because it's so old the rest of the box probably needs to be you know right. replaced replaced in general as well thanks question how much does it cost to replace the distribution box on average and mm, yeah good good question the 1500 to 2000 approximately. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, that's about right. Um, luckily, the county doesn't require um, a permit for a box replacement anymore. So actually, that has sped up the process. Um, but yeah, I mean, depending on whether or not you're getting um, how big of a tank you need, right? And that's uh, focused on how big the leach field is. So you might just need a very small box, you might need quite a big box. And then depending on whether or not the provider um, uses precast concrete, um, some of them use um, a, a poly plastic box. So those can certainly um, impact that. And then of course, you know, how deep it is, right? If it's just sitting, you know, two feet below the surface, that's a lot different than if it's sitting, you know, 10 feet below the surface and they've got to bring, you know, a separate piece of equipment back. So I think 15 to, you know, 21, 2200 is a good, a good range and assumption. Um, it's one of the reasons to consider using somebody who does the septic system as somebody who's also licensed by the state to do repair work. Um, not everybody who's got a pumping license can do repair work. So you're sort of stuck having to hire yet another person to come back and give you an estimate if there is a problem. So, you know, if you can one stop shop by having the inspector also be somebody who can, you know, give you a quote for the work and give you a timeline that can be, you know, a, say, uh, a step that saves time. Another question, can you explain the relationship between the size of the tank and the leach field? Is it inversely proportional? Uh, they're not proportional at all. It's actually a function of the soil. So if you've got a thousand gallon tank, you could have you know, an average size leach field, or you might have a leach field that's just enormous because the soil is really not of good quality, or you might have, um, uh, a field that is uh, 
sort of separated into two different places because the amount of space you need isn't available in one space. So you'll have part of the leach field in say area A and part of it in area B just because there's not enough room. So there is no specific proportion to tank size and leach field. The leach field is really all about the quality of the soil, um, how it falls away from the, from the house and the tank itself. Um, they're, not, they're not really related. I saw the questions that's on the chat. Anybody else have a question? Oh, what? Yes. Is there a list of licensed septic repair inspectors for our area? Uh, I know that I go to just the DPOR site and I click on that and then I just type in Charlottesville. That's the easiest way because it tends to be, um, I know for sure I'm getting it straight from the source. Um, those folks are folks who should have their, you know, their licenses current and up to date. And it gives me a list of everybody versus just, you know, simply Googling and see who comes up. So I go to the DPOR site and just, you know, click on the, the septic, the septic, uh, the septic link. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Was the 1500 to 2000, was that just to replace, what was that for? To replace the, the distribution? Yeah, exactly. Just to replace the distribution box. So they've got to connect that incoming line They've got to disconnect, or excuse me, disconnect the incoming line. They've got to disconnect the outgoing lines. They've got to pull that box out. They've got to re-level the bottom of the, of the existing hole. And they usually have to actually dig quite a bit of a bigger hole because they need to set that in and then put all of those pipes back into the tank. So um, yeah, it's the, the tank is not as expensive as the labor is for that process, that's for sure. Is there an average of when you don't have problems of an inspection, a septic inspection cost? Um, yeah, I mean, everybody does a little bit of something different. Um, typically what I see is starting right around, you know, 325 for just a pump, right? Nothing's really inspected. I mean, that should be what the seller's doing regularly. For an actual inspection, um, expect that to go up a little bit because you're looking at getting a tank pumped. Um, you're unearthing the lids of both the distribution box and the tank itself. Um, so figure, you know, in the 550 to sort of 700 range, just depending on who's actually doing the work. Okay. Any, any septic company should be able to give you a quote sort of on the spot. And of course the extra charges that they have will typically be if they have to go get an excavator and, you know, mechanically dig a hole versus just having a guy dig for 20 minutes to get down to, to the spots. Okay, this was great information. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question for the group. Um, can you hear me? Oh yeah. yeah. So when you're selling a house as is, what is everyone's thoughts on septic inspection from the seller's perspective? If you're selling a house as is, what are y'all's thoughts on that? I think the contract has a, has a place, I think it's 16A or B or C in the VAR yeah, 600. In there, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That certain yeah, things have to work. About the as is, and they're still obligated to do the, the septic inspection, I'm thinking. Okay, anyone else have a question? I'm asking lots of questions. Um, Right. Would you ever would you recommend that the seller ever pump it before or it's just a waste because then I mean before before putting the house on the market does it make sense to pay for an inspection and have that available? Um, yeah, sometimes it does for sure, right? If if you ask, gee, when was your last inspection? And they're like, we're on septic system. Um, that would be a great time to sort of you know nip that in the bud in terms of trying to head off any you know, problems that are gonna be, you know, be discovered by the buyer. But in the same way that you know, if you have your buyer pay for a pre-listing inspection, right? You may have some, some buyers and buyer agents who are like, yeah, well, great. We'll just look at that and call it good, right? Um, a lot of agents won't do that. They wanna get their own that their buyers have paid for. So you know, if they're just going to get it pumped, that's great. If you're working with you know, a savvy, buyer who says, great, it was pumped, but it wasn't really inspected. So we can't really identify all of these other issues, then your seller may have just paid for something that really isn't going to serve them that well. So I think it really depends on 
um, you know, who the, who brings the buyer and what their level of, you know, savvy and comfort is in the process and what your sellers have done so far, right? If it's been a long time or they've never had it done, it can certainly be worth it so that they're not, um, you know, completely surprised when somebody else has it done and, you know, a bunch of problems are discovered on the back end. Okay, anybody else? Wow, uh, I think this was a, a great presentation. Uh, Deborah, we thank you for joining us this morning and- uh, Yeah, my pleasure. Sharing your expertise in this. Uh, okay, guys, well, we hope everyone has a great day. If you want a copy of the recording, again, go to our YouTube channel. Um, we'll try to get the slides from Deborah. If you could send those to me, Deborah, that would be excellent. Well. And then I'll try to get those out um, to everyone. So everyone have a great day. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, everybody.